I'm in Cape Ann during one of the driest years Massachusetts has seen in recent decades. This area has a rich history of commercial fishing, further popularized in recent years by a well-known fishing show. I'll be in this area for a few weeks to help out a family member as she recovers from a surgery. With my free time, I'll do what I always do, explore the outdoors and find myself some aquatic beauties. It'll be multi-species angling for me, though, after satiating my thirst for smaller species, my ultimate goal is to catch a slot limit striper from the Atlantic. Little do I know as I'm starting out on this adventure that one of the best fights I'll ever have awaits me. A fight that'll threaten to tip over my kayak into the cold ocean and leave me wondering if I can even land the beast of a fish beneath me. Why don't you turn around a little bit? Oh, man. It's my first day in Cape Ann. I'm wasting no time getting to an inland water source at Cape Pond in Rockport to target chain pickerel. It's what I call field work fishing because these catches have purpose beyond just having a good time outdoors. Mini King spinnerbaits are pulling pickerel out of the shallows. The DT6 is working perfectly to nab specimens sitting in the deeper weeds. I consider this fishing as work because I need more quality photos of adult specimens for the updated ESOX guide I'm making for the cannabis community here. Not a bad start to the trip. Target specimens from this population captured and photographed. I can now relax into some multi-species sampling for the rest of my time here. Only a couple of blocks from where I'm staying in Gloucester, an Oceanside Park is a convenient spot to sample the salt water. A simple fluke rig armed with red gold fireworm does its job. And a number 18 hook and a bit of chopped shrimp just being twitched along the bottom lands me some beautiful sculpins like this gorgeous fella. I just love those red horns. A 
It's extremely hard to tell the difference between Grubby and the Shorthorn Sculpin at this size. Though this low anal ray count suggests it's a Grubby, it could still be a Shorthorn. A confirmation of the presence or absence of a very small pore in the last gill arch is required by looking under the gill plate. And though I checked this specimen and I didn't think I saw one, it's very hard to see, let alone photograph, on a live specimen, especially one of this small size. The goals around here are crafty and won't hesitate to steal your bait. You can't have my bait. Go away. This giant goal already snatched a couple of my shrimp when I had turned my back. Cape Ann has been rewarding these first few days, but I have to head back into Boston to take my aunt in for her surgery. Of course, that means I'll tap into the Charles River while she's getting operated on. I'm just going for some lepimids for a future KNFSB reel, but I've spotted some common carp. My lunch has now been repurposed as carp bait. A cliff bar makes the perfect sticky scent bait on the method lead, and I always have fake corn on me. These carp won't take the rig on the deep side of the pier. So I'm going to move it to the shallower water where I'm seeing them feeding off of the benthic edge of these emergent plants. It's a risk as there are plenty of obstacles to snag. It's a bit of a pain having to untangle around these pier pylons. That's why I always use strong braided line. Not a bad afternoon of fishing. Time to get myself and my aunt out of Boston and get back to Cape Ann. I'm dual purposing my nature outings. I'm fishing for the KNFS channel as well as capturing footage for the Koa Nature channel. So I'm tapping into many wildlife spots. With a little bit of motivation, each day can offer a rewarding adventure. Using a size 18 and 22 hook reveals there's no shortage of Atlantic silver sides in the surf channels and estuaries around here. It's 
same goes for the Mumachog. Telling Mumachog from Banded Killifish apart is not always easy as Mumachog striping can be inconsistent. The simplest trait to look for is the snout. These species can hybridize in areas where they coexist, making IDs even more tricky. Microfishing in the surf offers great scenery, though the water is a bit chilly. I've landed about 15 different species of fishes, and I've seen a couple of stripers in the past week. And the water temperature is starting to drop. It's been floating around 59 to 63 degrees. I can hardly swim in it without a wetsuit for more than 15 minutes. It's time to focus on catching stripers before the water gets any colder and they move on. Ideally, I'd like to get one in the slot limit to harvest. That means it has to be one that is at least 28 inches and less than 35 inches. That's a narrow slot limit. But it's said as that to help minimize the harvest on this species and help the population restabilize. A cliffside perch in Rockport offers a nice view while I start focusing on stripers. Looks like a nice view is all I'm going to get on this afternoon. The next day it's a different spot in Gloucester. Again, no stripers. I'm not giving up though, I'm just more determined than ever to land a slot limit striper. So I'm at Stage 4 Park today in Gloucester. That's how you got to say it up here in Massachusetts. And I really want to hook up with the striped bass. I have been trying artificials. I have been trying cut bait like mackerel. I have not been landing striped bass. So I got some live eels today. <sighs> See if I can get one. Typically I don't like to use live fish as bait when I'm just sport fishing. But I am kind of wanting to catch a striper in the slot limit so I can eat one. So I think uh, that works for me. And we all have to draw our ethics when it comes to fishing and hunting, so. For stripers, I gotta use uh, inline circle hooks. I'm either gonna go with a five odd or a seven odd. Got a three ounce sinker, three way rig, to a hook. So my only worry is I'm gonna be using my brand new uh, Cast King a telescopic rod. We'll see if it can endure a big fish if I get one. I have no worries about the reel. This Corrado uh, Shimano 201 HDK is just sweet. This will hold up fun. Look at all these Bonito jumping right in front of me. It's a good sign. I'm letting the tri-rig sit on the bottom for passerby stripers while I grab old Pinky and catch some Bonito for fun. But the tri-rig is definitely not the way to go. The strong currents and a lively eel just causes a cluster of tangles. I'm finding that casting and keeping the eel behind a simple swivel leader rig is the best way to prevent tangles. Though constantly casting live bait has serious disadvantages. It will cause the bait to die faster, and my rig will be in the water less time than if it were just sitting on the bottom. Not to mention, I'm already limited to a small accessible casting area on the shoreline. Just saw a striper, a big one come up. 
right when I was reeling in, but then it backed off. It's discouraging that it didn't hit the rig, but it's a good sign that it at least took interest in what I've presented. Well, well I've been at it for uh, four and a half hours, and all I have seen is one big striper come up, look at the eel, say nope. I've tried four different ways of rigging this. I'm just gonna keep at it till I run out of lighter, run out of bait. I go through footwear like crazy. I mean, uh, as far as a view, man, this is some uh, great fishing. I got a little something. Probably a striper. Ooh, it's putting up a good fight. Yeah, it's a good fish. I don't know if you can see it. That is definitely a striper. That's a nice one. Oh, where am I gonna land this thing? Oh yeah, no. let's play you on top of the rock. Oh, that is a nice striper. That might be a nice. Oh, really? No, you don't get a go. Look at that nice fish. All right, you see that those rocks are algae covered. I do not want to slip into the ocean at this junction in time. Oh, those are very slippery. No way. Damn. 27 is an inch short of the, the spot limit. I gotta put you back, buddy. It took some time and a lot of rig adjustments, but at least I've landed a striper. And you know, changing things up is always a good thing. That's one thing I always admire about other anglers and is our adaptability. We're really good at uh, adapting to whatever the situation demands. Still no slot limit striper, but tomorrow's another day. I'm making a stop at Halibut Point State Park to film for Koa Nature Channel. I'll do a quick microfish in the quarry and then I'll attempt to land some stripers and other species off of the rocks with artificials and cut bait. It's all nice sized cunners in Atlantic Bonito. A local told me these fishes from this genus are great eats, and these are the perfect size specimens to harvest. But I'm saving the limited amount of ice I brought just in case I get a striper. The stripers eluded me again today. And to add insult to injury, I snapped my rod when I mistook a boulder snag as a fish and I hooks it way too hard. Though this rod break may just prove to be a blessing in disguise. New day, new spot, new rod. I'm in Rockport at La Blanc Cove. And I'm going back to the bait that worked. It's live eels again from the rocks. I'm seeing plenty of small fish getting chased by something. I'm almost sure they're stripers. But tossing eels around this lot isn't pulling up stripers. And the artificials only produce more bonito and mackerel. Gorgeous fish though. This guy's lucky I don't need any more bait today. I'm done messing around on the rocks. It's time to take a risk. I'm gonna do what I've been hesitant to try since having my spinal surgery. A local has agreed to let me use her kayak from the nearby beach here at the cove. For the last decade or so, for me, kayaks have always meant severe back pain originating from an old hockey injury 
and made completely worse last year during a fishing trip in Michigan. But maybe, now that my spine has been operated on and it's been a handful of months post-op, this kayak won't be a problem. It's time to do this more effectively and approach these stripers from the angles that I want to approach from. I had to pick this up today because I snapped the cast king in two yesterday when I got snagged on a boulder off another uh, cliff face. I got a little too aggressive for it. I'm not going to blame the rod on that. But I wanted something. I've been having my eye on this for a while to add another St. Croix to my series. Uh, this is an inshore heavy seven foot. I was wanted the seven foot six, but I can't fit that in my rental car. So the seven foot will do, and I'll just lose the casting distance. But yeah, the rod is sweet, but I forgot to buy a new line to respoil the line I lost yesterday. I can't let anything big run with this. I'm almost at the bottom of my spool. I got a fish. Oh no, it got off. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. It's just running at me. It's just running at me. Oh boy, this thing's just pulling me. I don't have enough line. I'm at the end of my spool. Holy shit. Well, this is just a big fish. This is one of the best fights I've ever had. Oh. Shit. I can't let it run out. I don't have a school for this. Oh, come on. Why don't you turn it on a little bit? Oh, man. Oh. Why don't you come up to me? Why don't you come up to me? Oh. Right, I got to turn it on. I'm switching between trusting my drag and popping my bail, allowing my thumb to directly control wind and how much line I want this fish to take. Maybe turn it on a little bit for me. You gotta be right under me. Oh, don't break the rod. Let's not break the rod. I'm gonna give you a couple more feet. That's all you're gonna get. This is truly a battle of inches and feet. The fish takes some. I try to take a few more back. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh he's still got life. He's still got life. I'm glad I've been keeping up on my upper body workouts. This fish is strong. How is this boy not tired? How is this boy not tired? Well, this would be a nice fish to break this rod in, huh? If I can land it. Holy sh! That is a massive, massive strike. Alright, I'm just going to take this off so I can show you it underwater because I'm not going to be able to land this easily. It's been just under 10 minutes since this tugboat of a striper started dragging me for who knows how many zigzagging yards around this cove. I'm going to try to land it at sea and get a quick measurement. I'm also hoping there's no great white shark underneath of me that'll snatch this fish and my hand along with it. He's so massive. I have to be careful. Lifting a fish this large could easily turn the kayak over. Ugh. It's gonna tip my friggin' kayak. Oh, 
Oh. That was close. Had I leaned to catch the fish as it flung itself overboard, that kayak definitely would have flipped. He's just so big. And he's tipping my freaking kayak. The head length alone on this fish is about a foot long. All right, oh, he's bigger than the 40 inch measuring tape. Okay, hold him up. This fish is at least 15 years old and could potentially live double that time. Which is just so big. All right. It'll give you some life. Bigger than the 40 inch measuring tape I brought. Definitely not in the limit. I'm very fortunate that my medium travel rod broke yesterday. I highly doubt it could have endured the battle with this beast. This fish is probably a female, just based on the size. There's no easy way to tell male versus female just looking at this species. From my kayak, I can't see all these other stripers showing beneath the waves and glare but the beast I've just released is noticeably larger compared to the other stripers in this bay. This whole shoal of stripers reacts to evade their giant comrade like it's a shark. I'm happy to see it strongly swim off. Well, that was uh, one hell of a fish. That was a good fight. I'm just uh, thankful to be able to do that. I mean, it's been a little over a year since I completely messed up my back and I had some months there where I could basically just walk around. I couldn't do much more and so I'm really fortunate that all went well on that. And very happy. I'm still reeling from that fish. Big fish. Still no slot limit striper though. I'll keep at it until I run out of light. The kayak has been the way to go. I'm landing plenty more stripers on eels and shrimp. Yet, out of all that I'm getting, not one is in the slot limit. Still, I'd say I found a damn good success in the failure to capture a slot limit striper. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're catching some big fish too, or whatever species and size that you're going after. So big. All right. Fish responsibly and uh, good luck.